Yeah. Oh, sweet. That's recording. All right, cool. All right, so you're just going to have to send it over at, at the end, so. Yeah, no problem, no problem. All right, here we go. I'm going to do the little uh, intro. No problem. What's up, guys? It's the Beer League Beauties Podcast. We got Luke on here for episode 17, sponsored by Gladiator Energy. Um, our buddy, he uh, he's a national champion, which is pretty cool. I got to play against him one game. Um, congrats on that, man, and uh, it's awesome to have you on here, man. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate that. Yeah. So me and Luke, uh, I kind of just DM'd Luke out of the blue. Um, just really wanted to talk to a national champ. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, it's it's so, awesome. Yeah, yeah dude, we saw your thing through, uh, it's just going through like, I've got a notification and the whole thing you made about like the covers was pretty cool, man. And then you ended up reaching out from that. So it was, uh, pretty cool how we got to get together from that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about your, your hockey career here. Um, so where'd you grow up playing? Um, so I'm from Philadelphia. So basically I grew up just playing double A hockey out here. Uh, nothing too crazy. And so I got around like 16, 17. I played junior choirs, triple A. Um, and then I kind of was one of those stories where you hear like people go to these pre-draft camps and no one ever makes it, you know, they're just kind of money grabs. And I was told that going into it, but I was like, right, I got nothing else to do. I, I got to make a team somehow. So I ended up going to actually rookies blizzard. Who's now the Norseman in the Nall. uh, ended up going to a pre-draft camp, got invited to the main camp, didn't get drafted, tender or anything and, and ended up just making the team through that. So uh, it's pretty just kind of out of the blue getting picked up from there so it doesn't really happen too often so it's a pretty cool story how that happened yeah that is pretty cool i got i got an email from odessa and i'm like oh instant money grab <laughs> not it. yeah that's what i figured i had I no like no other options and uh it was i was talking to wilkesbury at the time too so i went to them for the last couple of years so i called wilkesbury's coach and i was like yeah which which camp do you think i'd like am i going to have a chance to make your team he's like oh you should probably go to brookings i call a brookings coach he's like yeah, you might want to go to Wilkes-Barre. So another team, neither team wanted me. So I was like, all right, I'll just go out to Brookings, see what happens. And uh, I ended up working out for me. Wow. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, that's pretty funny. And so how many years did you play uh, in the Null? So I played uh, two years in the Null, and then I went over to the D.C. So the I was in Brookings my first year. And then we ended up getting relocated to St. Cloud, where they are now. Um, so it was St. Cloud Blizzard for a year. I think in total of those two years, we had 40 wins at 120. So, yeah, we were the worst team in the league last those uh, two years. But uh, either way, I still a fun group of guys and uh, got to play juniors, of course. And then I ended up going to the NCDC for my last year because uh, I was talking to Army at the point. And I was, at that point, I was trying to get to uh, play at West Point. And I know Coach Sobe and, and all them over at Hitman, pretty close ties. So I ended up going there for the year. And that was the COVID year. So we ended up going uh, into the bubble. That's when we all went to Florida, which is pretty cool. Um, end up committing to Army around the beginning of, uh, or like right after the new year, uh, my age out year. So I was committed to Army up until May, in the middle of May, end of May. And I was doing all my medical stuff and my asthma kind of held me back. And, and technically they could, weren't allowed to, I wasn't like eligible to necessarily be on the team and go to the school because, uh, my setback so that's kind of where Hobart came into the picture because they were one of the last schools that still had a spot left and I was talking to Hobart before then and uh it kind of was a perfect fit so I ended up working out after a kind of unknown situation yeah definitely worked out mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome and so to get to that d1 level like when you committed how did that feel uh, oh, I was so sad. I was, I was trying to. So this is, I was like in the bubble, and it was like we were living just with our teammates, and we were at some golf resort in the middle of Florida. So like it kind of everything felt so surreal in the first place because we're not home, we're not playing at our home rink, we can't leave the campsite or I mean the golf course wherever you're at. So I get a call out of nowhere. Uh, I was talking to them of course throughout the year, and they were just still trying to figure stuff out. And I get the call saying, "Hey, like uh, we want to obviously have you for the year after." So I was like. All right, let me, uh, like, let me talk to my family. This is like a big decision. 
I called him back five minutes later, and my mom was like, my parents were like, are you stupid? Like, I don't know. I'm not just saying yeah right away. I called him back two minutes later and uh, and made it official. So it was pretty fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So, uh, at least you, you know that you could play at the D1 level. But, exactly. it, you know, Hobart, that is, that's like, you guys could definitely play with, you know, Division One teams. So Yeah, especially this last year. We had a pretty pretty stacked team. Wow, yeah. Um, it was some pretty scary hockey when I was playing. I was like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is one of the best teams I've heard. Like we had in a good bid. I mean, we had a pretty deep team too. Like our, our top six, or actually our top nine. Oh, God, so I'm gonna say like all of them. Everybody can score at any time. Like the kid that won uh, Will Crane, who scored our game winner in the national championship, he was playing I think fourth line at the time. Like it doesn't matter who it was. Like we just had so much depth that. It didn't matter what time of the game it was or who it was, uh, someone's going to step up. And that's just kind of the way it went last year that we just had a ball rolling and, and no one could really stop it. Yeah. Um, what about, did you guys have any guys that were, um, you know, were scratches and stuff? How many of those guys do you have? We had about, I think, four scratches made, uh, mainly throughout the year. Um, some guys, of course, like, cause our team was so good and we were all pretty consistent. Everybody could have been in the lineup. Didn't matter who we really played with. Those four guys were interchangeable throughout the whole year, but we didn't have a super deep team. Uh, compared to my freshman year, we had too many guys compared to stalls. So we had two guys sharing one stall at one point. Um, so last year we actually had a couple open stalls, but it ended up working out because even though we only had four scratches, everybody was pushing each other. Everybody wanted to get in the lineup. So it was a pretty competitive environment we had. Mm-hmm. Um, so in practice for you, was it a dog fight or were you guys kind of controlled? And, um, I think most people, especially the freshmen, I feel like everybody knew coming in that no spot was guaranteed. No matter if you were junior, senior, we had, even my freshman year, we had seniors getting scratched every other game that had played all four years. So like coach doesn't really care kind of what year you are. He just wants to win. He wants to put the best guys out there. They're going to help us win the game. And when he knows that whoever he puts out there is going to kind of come through and, and uh, kind of do it for us. Of course, like in practice, we had, we usually do like a lot of battle drills. So that's kind of where we see where we fit against each other. And it's always pushing each other to get better. And obviously like most teams do, um, but it was, it was kind of a dog fight almost every day, no matter what drill we were doing, everybody wanted to play at the end of the weekend. So uh, it definitely kept us on our toes. Oh. Yeah, I mean, practice at USM was a dogfight every <laughs> practice. So. I'm sure, yeah, and that ice is huge you guys got over there too. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, we had Maverick, is his last name Goyer? Yeah, Maverick, Maverick Goyer. Goyer. Yep. All right, so he was committed to USM. Before. Oh, okay. So he was committed uh, um, before this year to USM, and then right – Right when school was gonna start, he went to uh, Hobart. The spot opened up at Hobart. Yeah. So, so actually, he- yeah, our my roommate actually last year he was he came to he was obviously at school last year and then um something happened and, and he ended up not being able to come back to school this year. So we were kind of late with getting a third goalie and I think I don't know how they found that or, or I don't know how, I didn't even know he was committed to USM. Honestly, that's pretty news to me. So uh, that's pretty interesting though that they got him from you guys. But yeah, yeah. he was a late addition for sure. Yeah, so every time we pay, we played you guys, coach was pretty pe- pissed off about that one. <laughs> you better snipe on this kid. That's funny. That is funny. But uh, yeah, so um, championship year. Um, can you give us a little bit, um, like the inside details of kind of like your playoff run and in, into the championship? Uh, so yeah. So even in our even when we were doing going for our conference uh, title, we played, I think, Castleton off the rip. Let me just double check real quick because I was forgetting to. Yeah, we played Castleton off the rip, and we were going into the third period, and we were down 3-2 going into the third period. We are playing the lowest seed, making it to the playoffs, um, and we're, like, starting to panic. Like, we were supposed to – we were, I don't even know. We had two losses at, at that point. Like, we're not expecting us to lose, and if we would have lost, who knows we would have made the uh, national tournament. So it kind of, and then we ended up scoring five in the third, and that kind of, I think, turned our whole season around. Uh, and then we had a rematch against Skidmore, where last year we lost in that game, the semifinal uh, NEHU game to Skidmore. So that was kind of our, our revenge game. 
against them, and then we uh, I kind of took it to Babson in the final game of the uh, of the Amiichi. So we ended up getting a bye for the tournament, and well, we had Curry first, and we know we matched up to get well against them. They were they would play us hard, and we play them hard. So uh, we obviously did some research about them, figured out what we had to do to kind of go into the game to plan for that. Um, and we were down in that game as well. And I remember we, I think we scored three goals in a minute 30 uh, in the second period. And then ever since then, I, I think we went on to win maybe 5-1 or something like that. But that was another scare. Like we kind of, you never could have really counted us out no matter what game it was, whether we were down with one minute left, like we were in Buff State and we ended up coming back and winning or uh, down in the first period, second, whatever it may be. We uh, we kind of knew we'd have trust in each other to end up coming back. So bringing that to the semifinals when we went to Endicott, we played Endicott, so that place was juice. Uh, with just Endicott fans, so it was pretty fun playing against them. Obviously, you were, <laughs> we were really outnumbered, but um, again, we were down to them, and and one of our seniors scored to tie it up, and, and we ended up scoring on the power play to to kind of push us ahead and end up finishing that one. And we finally got a rematch against uh, Adrian because uh, Adrian lost or beat us out last year in the quarterfinals in the national tournament. So obviously, we weren't looking to play Adrian. We were hoping it was UNE. Obviously, nothing against them, but Adrian was just such a powerhouse on offense. Uh, so we didn't really know how we'd fare, even though we were, I guess we were ranked number one defense at the time. But uh, kind of glad we did because we, we got our revenge this year. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, how was it like playing those, like, uh, those number one teams like Adrian, um, Uni, Endicott? How were they compared to um, any other teams? Honestly, they – it's t- it's a different type of play style because we don't play against them. When we play against other teams in the NEHC, everybody obviously knows how we all play. We we don't really change systems too much unless, like, new coaches come in. So we kind of know how each other play. When we played Endicott or Curry, Curry was new to us. Um, and they kind of took it to us in the first period, and we were kind of caught off guard. Not like we were – we weren't really caught off guard, but we weren't really – ready for that type of game. They kind of brought a physical game to us and, and we kind of had to adapt on the, on the fly. So that's kind of how we, we handled the other teams as well. The first period was usually our like wait now period, kind of feel them out. And if we got chances, we took them. But uh, yeah, playing against those teams was a little nerve wracking, of course, especially with Endicott and the, and the pack building and, and Adrian being defending champions. Uh, you knew what you were up against and uh, you didn't want to lose that chance that you had right there. Cause who knows if you're ever going to get that chance again. Yeah. Um, and so I put you on the cover for uh, you know, the <laughs> NHL thing. Yeah. I got your attention there, and I did. Um, so clearly you scored on that goal, right? Was that a mm-hmm. goal? Yeah, that was the Endicott game when I got an empty netter, so it wasn't, it wasn't anything special. But it kind of sealed the deal. It was with like, I don't even know, maybe a minute left. We just flipped it out, bounced over a stick. I got a lucky breakaway and, and kind of just put it in, but – uh, so I was kind of going to our, our few fan sections, so we had to get them going as we could. But, yeah, that was yeah. from uh, the Endicott game. Yeah. And, you know, I, I feel like it's kind of unheard of to Selly, but when you're in the, the championship almost, you know, going to the championship, you know, you had to kind of pump up the crowd. How, how did that yeah. So uh, I mean, especially, like, when we're at home, all the boys, like, our fan section, our rank – Obviously, it isn't too big. Like you've been there, it's not. It's nothing crazy. The cooler is kind of a smaller rink, but we don't. We have such a small school anyway. So no matter what, whether it's community or whether it's uh, just the student body showing out, we know it's going to be packed. And and the fans love when we go selling in front of the of the board and stuff like that. But especially there, all our fans love when we come out to them. Uh, and it was funny because in the in the national championship, I ended up scoring one, <laughs> scoring a goal. I went behind the bend or the net, and my line mate was out there uh, trying to like grab me. And I kind of just blown by him because, I don't know, I was just so in the moment at the point, and the fans were going nuts. So I was like, all right, I'll tell you the fans. But it's like, I, there's a picture of like me just going straight by him. I feel really bad about it. But, I mean, I had to tell you with the fans at the point, but uh, he gets it. <laughs> and and so what did you do for a celly for that goal? Um, that one, oh, I do. Usually, like, I don't know, it's kind of instinctive. Um, in Babson, in the, like our Babson National Championship, I did like, like an air or something. This one, I think I did a jersey, like a jersey palm or something like that. I don't know. It's just whatever, like, comes to my head. I'm just, like, I barely remember most of the game because I'm just so in the moment. Like, every shift that kind of blends together. So, I, I kind of remember just, like, key moments of it. But, uh, yeah, when you score, it kind of just whatever comes to your head, it just it just happens. And I kind of feel bad for blowing off Jonah. But uh, that's what happens. 
That's all right. You got to get to the student section, you know? <laughs> exactly. Everybody came out to support us. We had a great showing, actually, for the national championship. Uh, it wasn't as many as the, uh, like, total uh, capacity as the Endicott game, but from both sides, Adrian and us, it was, it was a pretty good showing, especially from our alumni group. Yeah. I mean, your fans are, are pretty crazy. So we had a um, a playoff game against you guys, and – the fans were fucking chirping the dog shit up. Dog yep. shit. Up. Yeah, they uh they're ruthless, man. They they love to see us win. Uh they they don't like to pump our egos up too much cuz uh they think we have too big of one already, but um yeah, they definitely love coming supporting us and just going nuts at the games. Um especially uh, uh especially the football guys. The football guys always bring out uh a bunch of people. Sometimes they'll take their shirts off. It, it gets uh pretty rowdy at the cool at home games. So I can't complain too much about that. Uh, and so that national championship game, uh, it was kind of back and forth, correct? Yeah, we were actually up two nothing. So yeah, in the first period, we had my line came down. We ended up getting the puck on net, and Shane Shell ended up putting in the rebound. And then I scored. I think a little bit later, it was four on four, maybe five on four. And I just like picked off the D. We ended up going up two nothing. But I think Adrian was still in the power play at that point. Not even – it was the next shift. They ended up getting 2-1. So, we're like, we were thinking we're going up 2-0 on the uh, former, or the reigning champions. Like, we're sitting pretty right now. But with the offense like that, you really never know what's going to happen. So, they ended up scoring right away the next shift on the power play. And you know how good their power play was. They were, I think, like 40-some percent this year. Um, and then we were kind of at a stalemate through the second, third period with, like, five minutes left. Rodniak scores. Uh, who other? Who else? Who else would score? He scored, tied up, and um, so we were on our heels there. And I remember, like everybody was on the bench, just like we, cause we were so juiced. It's five minutes left, like five minutes away, going home with the ring. Like that's all we ever wanted. And then they end up talking that, and and kind of now it shook us up a bit, and and we were kind of on our heels. So we were just saying, like, get through the end of this period, and, and we'll be able to like restart and, and kind of get our mojo back on in the overtime. So we ended up holding on for the end of there, and I think it took until like five minutes left in OT for that goal. But it was it was a really close game, and, and it was the best offense versus the best def- best defense statistically wise, and uh, it was a great battle for sure. Tell us about that goal, and um, were you on the ice or on the bench? I was not on the ice. Actually, right before that, um, we we had I think what was it a it was either a like commercial break or something like that. We all huddled up and, and everybody's trying to get each other hyped up. And I just remember I was saying like, we always talk about like, let's do this for the alumni. Let's do it for the people that cheer for us and stuff like that. But at that point, there's no one else playing right there. It's only us. I was kind of just like, why don't we do it for us this time? Like it, it's about time we play for ourselves. It's about time we go do this for ourselves. And I think a couple minutes later, I was sitting on the bench. Uh, we actually, I gave, uh, like we had a two on one or a breakaway in overtime. Scheller almost won it for us, my line mate. But then, uh, He's actually our fourth line guy and could be a first line guy, doesn't matter. But um it came up high and, and Howie, our senior, one of our seniors, shot it, hits off a skate, and the goalie didn't really see it. He's down, it goes right to our team. It, it kinda couldn't have happened any better. I mean maybe we'll have to thank the hockey gods, I guess, but it goes right to his tape and, and he had a wide open net and I remember like it's just we have videos after videos and you just after that, like for the next couple months, even this day, you just still replay that moment of when you see the puck he like shot, even though it was like he had the whole net, he still shot far side, like just trying to make us all anxious. So, uh, ends up going in and, and the, the boys just flood onto the ice and, uh, celebration was unreal. I couldn't, <laughs> in my picture on Instagram, like I couldn't get my bucket off. I was like, I couldn't get the right side. So I was like trying to rip it off. You see it in one of my pictures. I like, you see me struggling and end up ripping it off and hitting one of our freshmen in the head. Ends up cutting his head open. So it's a, uh, it's a good story for, uh, our celebration, but yeah, I cut his head open. He's like, yeah, I got hit, but I don't know who it was. I was like, yeah, I don't know either. It was me the whole time. But uh, yeah, I ended up telling him later on, but uh, it was a part of the celebration and uh, couldn't ask for anything better than that. It was just a great moment and uh, pretty awesome for the boys to finally get it done. That's awesome. And so one of the rings coming. Yeah, uh, they will be coming. Well, shoot, I think we're having a whole ring ceremony uh, later on in the year. We'll have a banner raising game. I'm really hoping it's uh, – we play Norwich early on in the year. I think it might be our home opener. So if we do a banner raising against that, like, the cooler is going to be packed. I mean, we'll see who we play against, but uh, we're going to have all like our, our ring ceremonies will be pretty fun. Hopefully, we get a decent crowd and uh, 
our banner raising went pretty fun as well. That's awesome. I'm fired up for you, man. Absolutely. Thank you. I mean, I was I was rooting for you guys, obviously. You guys are in the same league. Of course. Um, even though that I hate you guys, but <laughs> anyway, I was fired up to see Hobart. Get it. Appreciate get that. It. Thank you. I know we had to knock off the the other champs, so uh, it felt good to, to finally dethrone them. And, and now, of course, you got a target on our back for this year, but we don't mind. We only I think we only lost three guys this year, so we definitely have a chance. Uh, gotta do something special again, but obviously, you know how hard it is to to even win games in the first place. Like D three hockey is so competitive, and you never know what could happen. There's fluky games all the time, and uh, to get to where we were is. Uh, it's definitely a difficult role to get there, and, and we'll kind of see if we can do that again. And um, so your team, do you guys have any, like, I know Adrian has a bunch of D1 transfers. Do you guys have any? <laughs> yeah, we have one. That was it. We got, uh, we have, yeah, surprisingly, we don't do too many D1 transfers. I don't know why. I guess that's just how our, our coaches kind of go about things. Uh, we have one. That's my lineman. He came from Alabama Huntsville after they got shut down. So he came in. He's a year above me, so he's going to be a senior this year. He came in when I was a freshman. He was a sophomore. He was a transfer, um, and we played together every game since. Um, so I, I can't complain too much about a D1 transfer coming in because I get to play with them. But, uh, yeah, we don't usually have too many transfers. Like, I know Oswego gets a bunch. Adrian gets a bunch. But uh, we don't really go that route for recruiting, it looks like. Yeah. A um, couple more questions here, and we'll, uh, no we'll shut them down. Um, no problem. How was the uh... – the celebration, like locker room, uh, like the bus ride home, and you know, all, like that week of celebration. How was it? Oh, it was. It wasn't just a week long celebration. We were celebrating all uh, until the end of the year, until we went home. Uh, end of the game, everybody's still taking that. They no one want to get off the ice. Everybody's cutting piece of the nets out to take with us. Uh, everybody was kind of just not really. We weren't really selling too much as like a, a team at that point. Everybody was kind of just taking it in themselves because. You don't know if you're going to get there again. You didn't, what we did is uh, it's pretty hard to do. So everybody's kind of taking it in themselves, take uh, cutting the net, taking pictures with family, taking pictures with friends, teammates, whatever it may be, holding the trophy themselves. Um, some guys were in the locker room. Some guys were in the lobby meeting up with family. Uh, so up until, like, we got on the bus and everything, of course, and everybody got in, we'll, we'll play, like, one of our win songs or something like that, and, and just everybody gets hype about it. But um, we ended up getting on the bus, heading to a local, uh, local bar in, at Endicott, where we had alumni waiting there for us, family, friends, um, student body. It was just the place was packed for us, and, and it was just a great showing, and, and we have running out the whole bar. Uh, we have alumni just giving us, uh, like, celebrating with us, getting us drinks, stuff like that. Uh, so we definitely have a, a good alumni group for us that were cheering us on all the way, that have been following us along. Um, so that celebration was great. We ended up going back, and it was funny. We actually hung out with some Adrian guys that, uh, that were still in the hotel, just – kind of just hanging around, shooting the shit with them uh, a little bit after that night. Uh, end up going home that day, which is a Monday. We come home. We get a police escort, which is pretty cool, back into Geneva off the highway. Uh, we have a bunch of people waiting out at, like, our – it's, like, the main building at our school. Everybody's waiting out there. So we get off the bus. Everybody's cheering, stuff like that. We walk in. There's a big ceremony for us. Then we end up throwing a party at, like, our, our team hockey house. And it was a Monday night, but no one really cared. We won a national championship, so – it was packed. We had a great night, and it kind of held on for. I don't think people didn't. We didn't go to class until like Thursday, Friday, maybe if people went to class. So we kind of took the week off, and our teachers, professors understood that, uh, kind of what we were going through at that point. So, but it carried through until the end of the year. We we still talk about it. We still bring our trophy around at whatever party we had. I mean, we just bring it out to eat. We bring it to parties, and people are like, "You're not gonna like give that in? Like, you guys gonna carry that wherever you go?" And we're like. Yeah, we're gonna carry it wherever you go. We won this, and, and we deserve to carry it. So, it's pretty cool. Fuck yeah, dude! Yeah, it was that's cool. awesome. Um, definitely after this podcast, I've I've had some great people on here, and this episode by far is is my favorite one here in about. Appreciate it. you. Uh, Thank you. This is awesome, Luke. Yeah, uh, out of blast, man. Um, so one more question. Uh, what's your future in hockey? And uh, do you have any advice for, you know, younger hockey players? Um, So my plan, I honestly don't really have too big of a plan. I'm going to kind of see how next two years go. Like, personally, I had a pretty good year this year with some recognition. 
Um, we'll kind of see how junior senior year goes. Um, I'm kind of looking if anything out to play pro. I'll end up going to Europe. Um, never really been to Europe, so I'm looking to play hockey over there. I'm um, Italian, so I'd love to play in Italy. See if that can uh, make that come true. But kind of just seeing how things go and uh, any advice I'd say is kind of take every chance you get. Like I said, like I I made an all team from a pre draft camp. Like you never know as long as you kind of give something a shot, you're going to get a chance. And once you get a chance, you have to kind of take that opportunity. So I, I turned a pre-draft camp into a Division One commit that, yeah, it didn't end up working out, but I ended up in another great spot and I won a national championship. So some things happen for a reason. If you're not meant to go one place, another place is another home for you. So uh, everything's going to end up working out, it kind of seemed like for me. So. Wow, dude. Great, great advice, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me here, man. Of course, uh, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I wish you the best of luck next year and kick some USM ass, baby. I don't know. <laughs> of course, man. You too. You good luck as well. Yeah, thanks, bro. Um, yep. Episode right, cool, 17. Duns, Dunsky. Um, yeah, that was you, fun. Yeah, man. Um, you can send that over. I don't know how you're going to, how you send right. that over. If you, right. I can send you my number. Um, yeah, what's easiest? Is it easy just to email it or here, let me just pause the thing.